folks that are that are that have chomped <laughs> at the bit, they, they've heard everything up to this moment. Said, "My God, I've got to, I've got to send Molly O'Neill a query. Yeah. I've got to ask you the essential questions. What kind of books are you looking for, and what's the best way that authors should be reaching out to you?" Sure. So there are two websites that you can look at. You can look at mollyoneillbooks.com. That's O'Neill with two L's. Um, you can look at rootliterary.com, which gives the broader spectrum of the whole agency that I'm a part of. Um, I have a broad list. My colleagues, Holly and Taylor, do more in the adult space than I do. They do a fair amount of women's fiction and romance and have had wild success with that. So if that's what you're writing, you should query them. I'm probably not your girl. Um, my list starts at YA with a few exceptions uh, and goes down. So I publish young adult books. Should I show some examples? Is that Absolutely. something you'd like to see? All right, so you already saw um, Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam. Words We Don't Say is another contemporary YA um, about a teenage boy um, who has a, um, a lot to say, but is is holding back on saying it. Um, it's a um, stylistically a very interesting book. It's one of those books that if you talk about too much, you give it away. But um, if you're looking for an interesting contemporary YA, that's a good one. Um, I also do middle grade. Um, this is the tragical tale of Birdie Bloom by Temri Belts. This is a a uh, fairy tale-ish fantasy or a fantasy-ish fairy tale, depending on how you look at it, about a um, orphan and a wicked witch who start writing letters to each other and end up saving the kingdom. This is Song for a Whale um, by Lynn Kelly. This is a story about a deaf girl named Iris who learns that there is a whale, um, and this is based on a real life whale um, that does not communicate at the same, at the proper, uh, Hertz level, which is like the, the measurement to, to be a whale. Um, so this whale is always swimming alone. She learns about this whale and feels like this whale and she have a deep connection to each other and she wants to help the whale find uh, connection. And it's the story of her to help this whale, but along the way, what she's really learning to do in looking out for what his needs are is she's learning how to advocate for herself and her own needs for the first time. The author is a sign language interpreter, so she um, is writing this based on her 30 plus years being a part of that community. Um, I also do picture books. Um, Um, this is Spencer and Vincent, the Jellyfish Brothers, about two Jellyfish Brothers that get separated. This is Emily Dove, is my illustrator, not the. Uh, this is also her book, Hello Honeybees, which is a board book that when you open it up, it's hive shaped, kind of a nifty trick. Um, and actually, there's also little bees that um, are attached to it that you can use as bookmarkers. I am terrified of bees. That that book would be like Stephen King. <laughs> so that one is not for you. Okay. Um, this is Nerdy Babies. This is a series that just came out in both board book and hardcover. Nerdy Babies Ocean and Nerdy Babies Space, and they are early um, books about curiosity and engaging with the world. This is the Dictionary of Difficult Words by a client of mine who's a lexicographer for dictionary.com. Uh, again, this is just my author, not my illustrator, um, but it is a book um, for the kind of kid who wants to sit around and learn a bunch of really challenging words and then go use them in sentences to like impress their family or scare their teachers. Um, so for a certain sort of nerdy kid or adult, <laughs> it's a great coffee table book too. Um, it's a really good one. Uh, and then I have, let's see, a number of um, uh, a number of graphic novels, which has been sort of an extension of my illustrator list. Um, and so, of course, there are lots I can't show you because they're in the process. But this is Kiss Number Eight, who the author is not mine, but the illustrator is. This is a graphic novel. Um, set in the early 2000s about a character who's learning about the secrets of her family, some questions about her own sexuality. Um, and it's it's beautiful on, on so many levels. Um, 
Escape This Book Titanic is for if you have a kid who's um, an artist type who's all, always doodling. This is basically the story of the Titanic with lots of activity stuff in. So it's like draw this part of the story, finish that part of the story. It's um, in fact, it's it's by Bill Doyle, illustrated by Sarah Sachs and you. Um, and so um, these are for a reader who loves like the I Survived series, who you know finds sort of like um, complicated minutes in history really interesting, but who also wants to be a little bit more engaged with the story in a sort of choose your own adventure meets a doodle book kind of way. Um, I also represent a number of educators who are also authors. Um, this is Colby Sharp, who some of you guys might know. Um, and he did an anthology that is 45 um, authors and illustrators who embarked together on the creativity project in which they each wrote creative prompts and then switched and everybody got someone else's and they had to respond to it and the responses make up the book. And then uh, they each wrote an additional prompt, which again is for the reader themselves. Um, oh, fun. Yeah. And practical and, for anybody that's looking to teach a creative writing class for yes. younger readers. Yes, it would be great for like creative writing workshops. And in fact, because Colby's a teacher, one of the things he said is anthologies are often way too long to really be used well in a classroom. I want to have an anthology, but to have the pieces be really short, which was a piece of knowledge that, you know, someone who is very well intentioned, but doesn't know that audience um, may not actually understand. So he, he did something sort of unique there. Um, and then I occasionally represent adult books. This is uh, a book that he and another educator, Donalyn Miller, wrote um, for uh, professional educators and librarians about um, the importance of book access. Um, but so boiling that all down, what does my look list look like? Um, young adult authors, certainly. Um, I'm drawn to things that are literary, that you know um, have beautiful, thoughtful writing. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm not also interested in smash successes and commercial things. Holly and Taylor are both really, really good at high fantasy. They're probably the right person for that kind of project. That's not me usually. Um, I never say never because you know I love it nothing more than when a project surprises me and makes me eat all my words. But most of the time the high fantasy is gonna be the better fit just like the women's fiction and romance is gonna be the better fit for one of them. Um, but for me, um, middle grade, uh, especially middle grade that has, again, that literary sensibility um, or that is doing interesting, playing with structure, playing with interesting ideas. Um, I'm, I'm really wide open in terms of middle grade. Um, I don't do a ton of nonfiction, but again, never say never. Um, I would be happy to do it if, if the right thing came along. Illustrators I work with, um, and maybe we should talk separately a little bit. Well, about illustrators, we barely oh, touched. Um, <laughs> oh, there we are. Okay, um, I was saying maybe we should touch for a minute on illustrators when I finish this. Um, but I do have a list of illustrators who work on anything from picture books to graphic novels to. Um, book covers and interior art. Uh, some of them do all of those, some of them specialize in a particular age range. Um, and then out of that, um, I, I have increasingly a number of graphic novelists or graphic novel illustrators because that's a booming and really exciting part of the market right now. I don't often sign people for picture book texts only. I have a few clients who write picture book texts. Um, usually they are someone who has an established audience or platform. For example, I represent John Shue's picture book um, texts. He has a big audience of book lovers and educators and librarians. Um, and sometimes, you know, if I have a client who's writing other kinds of books and occasionally writes a picture book, then certainly I will work with them on that. But I'm not looking necessarily for someone who, um, you know, is going to write 20 picture book manuscripts over the course of a year because that um, starts, uh, I, I think it's not the thing that I'm best at doing. 